Considering in that way, Krita, on which is created, Vaira Anu Bandhaya, a relationship of enmity with others, Visritya, giving up, Swayam, his own life. Upasangritaha, being killed. Translation. There were many great saintly kings who were very expert in performing sacrificial rituals and very competent in conquering other kingdoms. 
Yet despite their power, they could not attain the loving service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is because those great kings could not even conquer the false consciousness of I am this body and this is my property. Thus, they simply created enmity with rival kings, fought with them and died without having discharged life's real mission. Please repeat. There were many great saintly kings who were very expert in performing sacrificial rituals and very competent in conquering other kingdoms. Yet despite their power, they could not attain the loving service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is because those great kings could not even conquer the false consciousness of I am this body and this is my property. Thus, they simply created enmity with rival kings, fought with them and died without having discharged life's real mission. Just want to make a small comment before we read the poem. There is a, a thrust of the argument here that uh, Shukadev Goswami is citing those who have been very successful in life, people who are very successful, in particular kings. But it applies to anybody in any path of life who is very successful. And he's pointing out the failure that whilst we might be very, this is the word king right in the beginning, yad api, yad api, and the, the word kim, even though, even though somebody has been very successful, if he has failed to conquer the uh, misconception that I am this body and material things around me, they belong to me, then it's a failure. So this is the thrust of the argument here. Yeah. Purport, the real mission of life for the conditioned soul is to re-establish the forgotten relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engage in devotional service so that he may revive Krishna consciousness after giving up the body. One doesn't have to give up his occupation as a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra or whatever in any position while discharging his prescribed duty. One can develop Krishna consciousness simply by associating with devotees who are representatives of Krishna and who can teach this science. Regretfully, the big politicians and leaders in the material world simply create enmity and are not interested in spiritual advancement. Material advancement may be very pleasing to an ordinary man, but ultimately he is defeated because he identifies himself with the material body and considers everything related to it to be his property. This is ignorance. Actually nothing belongs to him, not even the body. By one's karma, one gets a particular body and if he does not utilize his body to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all his activities are frustrated. 
The real purpose of life is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, ch- second chapter, text 13. Atapumbi dvija sreshta varanashtama vibhagasha sanishtitasya dharmasya sansidir hari tosha. It really doesn't matter what activity a man engages in. If he can simply satisfy the Supreme Lord, his life is successful. Omagyana timirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshuruna militangyana tasame shri gurave namaha Nama Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatari Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yadapi dik ipa jaino, Yajvino ye vai rajashaya, Gintu param ridhe, Shairan, Asyam eva mameyam iti krita. Vairanu Bandhayam Visrijya Swayam Upasamrita There were many great saintly kings who were very expert in performing sacrificial rituals and very competent in conquering other kingdoms. Yet despite their power they could not attain the loving service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is because those great kings could not even conquer the false consciousness of I am this body and this is my property. Thus they simply created enmity with rival kings, fought with them and died without having discharged life's real mission. The uh, significant point of this particular verse is that there is a purpose to our life. And uh, of course, we, we also think there's a purpose to our lives. I have to be successful. There is a struggle for existence. And, and to, to succeed in the struggle, we consider it to be the measure of success. We, we struggle to maintain ourselves. We struggle to achieve all the things we desire. And we struggle means we dedicate ourselves. We, we sacrifice ourselves. Um, wholeheartedly. Mind, body and uh, intelligence is devoted to this goal. However, this is a misleading uh, goal, the struggle for existence. Now, you may rightly question, well, if I don't struggle, uh, I'll be defeated. For example, my struggle allows me to get some money. With that money, I'm able to maintain myself. So the logic is that if I stop struggling, I won't get the money. If I don't have the money, I cannot pay for the things that I need or want. So we think this is like 
a no-brainer. However, however, um, this is where Srila Prabhupada's point is very important in the purport. He says, in any position, while discharging his prescribed duty, one can develop Krishna consciousness simply by associating with devotees who are representatives of Krishna and who can teach the science. The um, point is that even if you are successful in your struggle, you die. It's, if, if we must be truthful, then we should confess that actually death does frustrate all my plans. Death is not something one welcomes. If you're struggling for existence, a death is the, uh, the ultimate frustration. It's, it makes the whole endeavor pointless. And therefore, therefore we have to reconsider whether the struggle for existence is my goal in life. Because it is destined to be frustrated by death. Shishi Gornitai, Shishi Krishna Balram, Shishi Radha Sham Sundar. So, why would I do something which will be ultimately frustrated and especially at great struggle, great endeavor, great effort, great sacrifice, only to be frustrated? And uh, so, what is the alternative? What is the alternative? What do I do with my life? The point of the verse is that we must do that activity which is not frustrated by death. Which is not spoiled which is not in vain. And uh, so this comes about by associating with those people who have already molded their life in a spiritual fashion, for a spiritual purpose, a devotee of the Lord. His endeavor, his struggle, his sacrifice is not frustrated by death. So the intelligent person, he says, well, I want to know more. Tell me more. How can this be? How can I do this? So Srila Prabhupada, first of all, in the purport says that we all have our occupation. In the introduction to the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada says, Krishna doesn't suggest anything unpractical. He's referring to the verse in the Gita, Tasmat Sarveshu Kaleshu, Mam Anusmara Yuddhacha. That therefore, in all circumstances, Sarveshu Kaleshu, think of me. Uh, why is performing your duty. So here, Srila Prabhupada is saying, one doesn't have to give up his occupation as a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. In any position, while discharging his prescribed duty, one can develop Krishna consciousness. So, two points. One is, you should engage in your occupation but not with the purpose for simply struggling for existence. But with a different purpose. You can engage in a job, in a business, in an occupation, 
but having a different purpose whilst doing it. The purpose is to always think of Krishna, to be Krishna conscious. So I said there's two things. So one is to do your occupation. The other is how whilst performing your duty, your activity, how do you become Krishna conscious? That's the question. How do you give up this false ego? I am this body and this is my property. Because Shukadev Goswami is saying that's, that's the failure. If you die thinking I am this body and all my possessions they belong to me then that life was wasted. Uh -huh. So Krishna's formula of engaging in one's occupation Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra is that that's also the same activity through which you become Krishna conscious. We have an assumption that the idea behind my occupation is money or something material to achieve some success, to have some power um, to achieve something material. We have assumed this, but this is our mistake. And if we become Krishna conscious while doing our work, we are saved from that mistake, from that illusion. So, let's go a little deeper. I'm associating with devotees and I'm a businessman. I'm working. How does that change? How does that deal with this problem of thinking I'm the body? How does it change the fact that I'm, I'm possessive? I, I want things. I want a car, a nice house, nice clothes, a nice family. How does it change? Um, Narada Muni mentions this to Vyasadeva in the first canto. That a thing the same thing that is the cause of our disease when applied therapeutically is the cure for that same disease. He's referring to <clears throat> problems that arise from taking too much milk. You develop some kind of indigestion. And the cure is to take yogurt, which is nothing but milk transformed. It alleviates this problem caused by too much milk and yet yogurt is nothing but milk applied therapeutically. So this, this activity of engaging in our occupation is the cause of our bondage. We become more and more attached to this idea that I am this body and all these things are mine. But there is a therapeutic use in Krishna consciousness. And the idea is to understand whilst I'm doing that activity, that it is for Krishna. Prabhupada gives an example, a nice example. Sometimes we find it hard to understand. What's the material difference between a devotee going to work and a person who is not a devotee going to work. Both are going to work. What is the significant difference? So this example helped me and I'm hoping it will enliven you too. 
So Prabhupada gives the example of a... <clears throat> you know how it is. Uh, the, a materialist, he likes to count money. I have so much money in his wallet at home. Checks how many rupees he has. So there's a sense of possession. But a bank clerk does the same thing. He counts money. He counts lots of money. But he doesn't think it's his. That's the difference. Same activity. But he thinks, he's, he's, there's no, it's not like, he's okay if he counts up to 10,000 rupees, but if he has to count a lakh, he becomes attached. No, it makes no difference to him. It's not his money. So there's this need to have an understanding of a bank clerk. That everything I'm dealing with, this house, this job, this family, is actually not mine. The bank clerk. It belongs to somebody else. I have a duty. So it's this consciousness of a duty. Without linking it with some material benefit. That is the therapeutic use of the same thing that binds us. This idea that actually my body, my possessions do not belong to me. And this comes about when you associate with devotees. That's the difference. And then our life is not frustrated at the time of death. Just like when the bank clerk has to hand over the money to the next person, he doesn't lament. He can leave the bank empty-handed, just as when he went to the bank empty-handed. So the devotee is able to leave, at the time of death, this life behind him without any attachment. That's the secret. That's the art. The other point Srila Prabhupada devotes much of the purport to is that it's not just doing whatever we're doing in life because mostly people engage in activities not because of duty. They have adopted activities on the basis of what's most, uh, they've calculated, they've calculated which activity will give me the best result? So they change jobs with that in mind. They change partners with that in mind. They divorce, find another person. Because they're not doing their duty. They're thinking of the result. This is one symptom. So Prabhupada is saying in the Prabhupada word, Varnashrama Vibhagaj. The duties are not your calculation of what is most materially lucrative. The duty is born of your guna karma vibhagaj. According to your quality and your activity, that is your duty. And you should execute it faithfully then it acts therapeutically. Because if you say, well, I mean, people do have questionable careers today, you know. They, they do really what could be termed as dubious work. For example, some people are, are speculating on the stock market. Now, you could say, well, that's my work. But actually, it's just a sophisticated form of gambling. And there are four regulatory principles. One of them is do not gamble, no gambling. 
So we have to be careful that in the name of duty, I don't consider something that actually may not be classified as a Brahman, a Kshatriya, a Vaishya, or a Shudra. These are duties. Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. These are duties. Again, as described in the 18th chapter of the Gita, Shamo Dama Tapa Socham, Kshantir Archava Mevacha, you know, and Kshi Goraksha Vanicham. And uh, so, for the Kshatriya, for the Shudra, these activities, they act therapeutic. But if you engage in activities which are, even if they're mainstream, even if they're very popular, they will bind you. They fall into the 16th chapter of the Gita, where pravrittim cha nivrittim cha jana vidur na asura. You do not, you cannot distinguish what should be done, what should not be done. You cannot tell the difference. So we must find activities according to Varnashra. Then that activity will act therapeutically by associating with devotees. We will not be attached like the bank clerk to the money we are counting. We, when we die, we will be able to go without this false conception that I am this body and these possessions belong to me. So, thank you very much for your attention. Are there any questions or disputes?